it's saying that I'm live, so we are starting on time. I'm excited about that. And we have a live studio audience again. Woo! Woo! Live studio audience is Max. Hello. Hey, and the two kitties. We've got Catsby and we've got Fitzy. Maybe if we're lucky, they will make a live appearance as they did last time. You know what? Let me give me one second. I'm just gonna make sure I'm live because I see myself pause. I don't see shit happening. But um, whatever. You know what? Fuck it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We're gonna just keep on going. Keep the magic working. Keep the magic working. Okay. So I'm excited to be here. I'm Twana Hines, as most of you know, because uh, again, this is not some big public facing thing that I'm at all making. Um, I haven't even put it on my newsletter. I feel like such an asshole. I haven't even put it on my newsletter because I haven't sent my newsletter in a while. And so the only people who know about it are like couple friends on Facebook, couple friends in my Girl Trek like running group, and a couple people that I sent an email to. And of course, the live studio audience. Woo! Yay! Exactly. So super excited about this. If you are here live, let me know so that I can see you. Um, I'm going to load the chat, which I didn't have open. Thanks, so. as most of you know. I, ignore, uh, ignore that double sound. Ignore that. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. So if you are here, uh, drop a link and let me know. Um, I'm assuming most people will be watching this later. But if you are indeed watching this live, I want to make sure that I'm able to find out who you are, where you are, whatever. So if you are... Feel free to drop in the chat either a hey, a thumbs up, or tell me uh, where you are in the world right now. I'm assuming most people are probably DC or New York, and so that's pretty cool. Okay, so I've been doing these, sexual health educator, Twana Hines. I started these almost over a month ago now when COVID was coming out, and it was like, we need way more data about sexual health and COVID-19 people talking about these two things together. And so I thought, you know what, just for my living room, for whoever's interested, whether we have zero people or we have five people, I'm going to tell people that, hey, here's what I'm doing, and we'll talk about different aspects of sexual health and COVID-19. And so the first couple of episodes, we talked about online virtual dating. I got excited about that. Uh, what else did we talk about live studio audience? We what did about, we talk about? Uh, dating, oh, porn, right? Porn, the porn and industry. And sex toys, right? Sex toys. We talked about sex toys, which are getting a boom right now. People are buying those and they're flying off the virtual racks. And so that's super exciting because as we know, because you've been watching these videos of sexual health and COVID-19, you are your best sex partner during these times. You know that. Okay. So what we're going to do now is this episode is about the international edition. What are other countries doing? International loving. If you followed any of my work, you know that I do did I do theater shows. I did for my debut theater show, a show called I Fucked Your Country. Good job. Look at this. Wow. The studio audience goes, wow. Ah, I love it. So I did a show called I Fucked Your Country, and it was about how I grew up evangelical Christian, did not have sex for the first time until I was 22 years old. And even then, it was like, only okay, because I was in another country. And so while I was in that other country, I talked a lot about that. You know what? I'm going to record this, because I just noticed it looks like it is live. Can I record it at the same time? I can. Woohoo! So that way, if it's super live, if it's super lagged, what I'll do is I'll post the recording instead of the live. So this live shit, only y'all right now watching this are getting this. The recording is what everybody else is gonna get if needs be. Okay, but yeah. So first show was called "I Fucked Your Country." Twenty-two years old in England. First time I that I ever had penetrative vaginal sex. So I talked a lot about that. And so the show is really about my maiden voyage or journey through that. And so thinking of that show, thinking about COVID-19, what have we not addressed on this yet? And it was like, the one thing we haven't addressed is kind of like, what are other countries doing? If we look outside of the U.S. borders, what do we see outside of there? So we're going to talk about three different countries, and we'll take those one at a time. Hey, Beebs is here. I can see the chat. 
Biba! Yay! Good to have you here. This makes me so happy. Biba is like, if you, Biba is an amazing friend. That's all I want to say. She is fantastic. If you could be so blessed and lucky as to have a friend like Biba in your life, you are lucky. Okay, so happy to have you here. Hey, Mama. Hey, right back to you. Okay, so uh, what was I saying? Three countries. We're going to talk about three countries and what we can learn about sex, dating, relationships, all that wonderful stuff. Okay, so I want to make sure that my studio audience <laughs> st stays tuned in and make sure that she is staying tuned and yeah, definitely excited and geeked out about this. And so I told her to throw three random countries at me, give them to me one at a time. And so this is on her. Happy to see you too, Beebs. Happy to see you too. Okay. And actually, while we're going to, we need Jeopardy music. Do, 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 oh, it would be good to have I'll Jeopardy do that. Music. While we do that, I'm actually going to go live at the same time on Marco Polo and tell some of my other girl track folks to come here. Okay. Do, 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 do. Mags? Okay. I'm actually live on YouTube right now. And Mags, the studio audience, is thinking of a question, a country. <laughs> a country uh, to talk about. So join us on YouTube. Go a couple slides back to get the link. Okay. First country. Netherlands. Good one. Good one. Of those of you who know me, I actually lived in the Netherlands uh, for years. I speak Dutch fluently. I really do see it as a second home of sorts. Like, I love a lot of things about Holland. And so... We talk about sexual health and COVID-19 in Holland. First thing comes to mind, actually, what is it? April, it is August. It's August 28th. Um, pick, ooh, babe said, pick some good one, Max. We'll be thinking of your second country. Okay. Think of the second country. Okay. So the Netherlands, though. So picture this. I moved to Amsterdam, and at that point in my life, I thought I was going to stay there. I was like, it's a beautiful country. The... Uh, Canals wear the city like a necklace. It's literally gorgeous. The shimmering lights off of the canal houses into the canals. It's just an amazing country. The arts are very much supported. Transportation is supported. Like there's so many things I love about the Netherlands. And so if we talk about sexual health and COVID-19, I was gonna put up a picture of the Dutch royal family, the uh, king who is Willem Alexander. And the queen, who is uh, Maxima, she is actually Argentinian, and they got married. And she, of course, lives in the Netherlands now and speaks Dutch. And so right now in the Netherlands, there's this huge, huge, how big is it? Huge. Yes, huge festival called Koningsdag. And so that's King's Day in Dutch. Um, and if you want to hear me say something in Dutch, you can actually drop that in the comments too, and I will say something in Dutch. But uh, King's Day. And so what happens with King's Day is the whole of the Netherlands celebrates being Dutch, Dutch stuff, wearing orange, which is the Dutch national color, and all of these things. Everyone takes to the streets. On those canals that I told you about, people ride their boats and they're like blasting like dance music. They have DJs. The streets are filled. Like that's what King's Day usually is. But it's COVID-19. And so a couple different things were different in the Netherlands that we saw. First, that sexy-ass couple that I told you about. And I should preface that by saying I don't follow their day-to-day. -day. I haven't lived in the Netherlands for years. So if they're total assholes, don't comment or write to me later and be like, what do you mean that sexy-ass couple? They're shitty. You should hate them. And that whole kind of like, you know, the Dutch royal family is over. Hashtag over. All that stuff. I don't know. Um, so I could be wrong about that. I'm going to comment about that. I'm actually going to comment about that. That comment right there in a second about miscegenation. Because someone commented that. I'm going to comment about it. But anyway, back to the Netherlands. And so this couple, uh, everybody's just like celebrating out on the streets. I have no clue what they've been up to. So if they're horrible human beings, I don't know that right now. But everyone celebrates. They actually celebrated King's Day in their homes. And did a televised, you can actually Google televised Dutch King's Day uh, celebration and you can get that and watch that. So that's the latest from the Netherlands and COVID-19, sexy stuff, sexy 
a royal family couple. And uh, that couple, actually, when I lived in the Netherlands, it was actually Koninginnendag. Yeah. So Konings, Koningsdag is King's Day. Koninginnendag is Queen's Day. And so Beatrix was still the queen when I lived there. So we had Konings, Koninginnendag instead of Koningsdag. That shit, that shit. Oh my God, it's so hard. Uh, Candice, another one of my favorite people. I love this. Okay. So that's the latest from the Netherlands. They are, I had a Dutch, watch one of the earlier episodes. I had a date with a Dutch guy, a virtual date. Uh, okay, Cupid it was like, take those boundaries off. Go on virtual dates with people from everywhere. Everyone around the globe is at home and bored as fuck. So have sexy combos with people no matter where they live. So I had one with the Dutch guy. So you can hear me speak Dutch in that one. You can watch that Dutch video. Okay, we're gonna have another, do you need a second? Do you want to think? No, I got it. Oh, oh, our studio audience has a, I, I hear the studio audience has another country because we're going New over country. New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand, New Zealand, New Zealand. Another great country. All countries are good. I would never say that any country is a shithole country because I'm not an asshole of a person. Only an asshole would call another country a shithole country. Not to name names. That aside, uh, New Zealand, yet another wonderful, fantastic, beautiful country filled with wonderful people, like all countries are. Uh, so New Zealand, I love that they have a woman as their prime minister. And as of today, which today's date is April 28th. So as of April 28th, they have almost, if not completely, eliminated COVID-19 there, which is fantastic. Like, that's amazing news. How could we not want that for any country? And so, like, as they announced that, a lot of countries and a lot of news outlets have been saying, what is it about New Zealand? What is it about New Zealand? And Forbes, I'll drop that article afterwards here, but if you Google Forbes, women, leaders, COVID, you'll probably find it. Forbes had a good article, and several other people have been commenting one of the kind of threads through all of these countries, one of the trends of the countries that are eliminating or containing COVID-19 extremely successfully is that they're all run by women. And so then we have to ask, do women lead differently than men? Do they? That's a question for you in the comments section. Post that as a thought. Do women lead differently? Yes or no in your chat. Simple one word if you think yes or no, that's cool. The other thing is if you say no, why? If you say yes, why? And while if any of you want to say your brave thoughts about that, I'm going to go to the studio audience and ask. Okay. Not to put you in the spot. Do women totally lead differently? Me on the spot, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> she said, totally putting me on the spot. Mags, Maggles, Maggie, I have been, we were, lived in the same dorm, college, undergrad, when we were all 17 years old. There's like 12 of us. Anita, Maggie, Wendy, Gwen, Jen Gulotta. Like all these people, we lived in the same dorm and we've stayed friends that entire time. So friendships over a long period of time are wonderful. When we talk about relationships, interpersonal relationships, remember you want to keep that healthy across the board. So not only intimate partner sexual relationships, your friendship should be healthy, your family relationships should be healthy, like all of those. Okay. So now that we said that, how do women lead differently? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, she says. How? I think one of the factors is that women are more likely to listen to the experts and people they have around them. Woo! In case y'all didn't hear that on the live, she says that women are more likely to listen to the experts and... Yes, yeah. like have good people around them have, listen yeah. to the experts that they have around them. She says take she, their input. Yes, she believes women create better teams. So one, the people who's around them. And two, not only the people around them, they're more likely to listen to them. That is an interesting theory. I love that. And I highly encourage you all to read that Forbes article in particular because that's one of the things they uh, speculate. Like they postulate that like it is possible that women are just better at listening to the advice of scientists and other people 
who are around them than men are. I, of course, don't believe any of this is biological. I think all of this is sociological or more heavily sociological. Women are more encouraged and reinforced and, and expected to be listeners and nurturers and things like that than men. Um, I don't think any of it is just like inherently, I don't think women's brains are that or men's brains. I think we're trained to do one or the other literally from the time that you are born and we start buying pink or blue or yellow or whatever color we buy when we subscribe to these gender binaries. Okay, so I'm going to go to the comments, a couple things. Miscegenation, I'm definitely fucking going back to that one. But let's see where we talk about women. Uh, yes, one of the folks says, yes, women live differently. differently. One person says, women capitulate. Do we agree with that? Not sure about no. that. <laughs> the studio audience member, the, the wide array of one studio audience member, because we're social and physical distancing here, so we don't have a room full of studio people, says, did you just say no or did you say fuck no? I, didn't, I, I think that was, may have been a fuck no. I thought I heard a fuck no. So there was like, fuck no, women don't capitulate. That's debatable. We can see in the comments what people think. Um, another comment here, I love this, because women are communal and think about others as much as we do as ourselves. That I think we are, and I think we're expected to, right? Like. I think, again, I don't think any of this is like just biologically ingrained. I think that if you have a man who is a leader and isn't necessarily considering other people, the things that people say or the words that people use to describe that style of leadership, is a man, if that is a man, are very different than the words that someone would say if we were talking about a woman who is leading and not taking others' opinions into uh, consideration and things like that. Um, and if you want to think about leaders, even think about like women who've run for president, women who are elected into seats, women who write publicly about their lives compared to men, all of these things. Tons of research about this. Y'all are smart little cookies and know how to use Google, so I won't go into the details there. Uh, another one, I love these feedback. This is great. Yes, we all lead based on our experiences. That is true. We all, I love that. We all lead based on our experiences and oftentimes based on how we have been treated. Ooh, smart little cookie. No one, cannot, no one can deny that as women, we have different experiences than men. So of course we will lead differently. That is sheer brilliance there. That is, that's what we call a chef. chef's kiss. Chef's kiss of knowledge right there. I love that, I'm gonna read that again. We all lead based on our experiences. And oftentimes, based on how we have been treated, no one can deny that as women, we have different experiences than men. So, of course, we lead differently. Brilliant comment. I love this. And of course, I will take two and a half, not even steps back because my apartment's not that big. So I'm just going to do two scooches back <laughs> and say, of course, I know we're saying men and women and I don't subscribe to gender binary as far as talking to other people. We're saying that just like. Uh, as we talk about the context of New Zealand, which is a country our studio audience member gave us, and the woman who identifies as a woman who's leading that country, and how she, and using the pronoun she, which she uh, identifies as, uh, leads differently than men who are currently leading. So I love that. Okay. Yeah, and then someone says, yes, it is social, and most of us listen because we know, oh, most of us listen because we know how it feels not to be heard. I love all of this. Uh, I'm going to back that ass up a little bit. I'm going to throw it back. <laughs> and I'll plug my computer in so it doesn't die halfway through this. I can't believe this. We only have 11 more minutes. It goes so fast. I'm so sad. Okay. But yeah, I love this. These thoughts about this. Because one of the things, especially this comment here really hit me about we lead based on how we have been treated. Woo. One of the reasons why I think I'm a good manager, both as an entrepreneur and the team that I've surrounded myself around, and also when I was in-house working at different companies, really, 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 really early in my career, like one of my very, very first managers, I learned how I didn't want to be <laughs> as a manager working with that particular person. And so this comment here about based on our experiences and how we have been treated, I remember thinking, I've had jobs where I went home crying or hid in the fucking bathroom and cried. Like just because like how he's being treated at the job and just all this crazy ass shit or whatever. 
And so when I got to the point where I was managing individuals and later teams and then department, like as I moved up in my career, I always kept with me, I want to be a cheerleader. I was a cheerleader too in high school, but I want to be a cheerleader for my team members. I want to support them. I want to not make them feel the way that I felt early in my career. Am I perfect? No. Do I fuck up sometimes? Probably. Um, are there days that I'm better at that than others? I'm sure. But for the most part, um, to my best efforts, I try to be much, much better than I, what I experienced early in my career. And so I 100% believe that. Um, okay, so that's good. All right, I'm going to save that miscegenation comment because it's so juicy until the very, very end. And we might have to, because this is COVID-19 and sexual health. You know what? I can bring that together. That's what happens when you write about sex for 15 years. You can find a way to loop everything back to sex. Popsicles. There's something to do with sex. Splashing, it's actually called. When you have sex, that's to do with like throwing food on people. It's called splash, splashing. Throw anything at me and I can l relate it back to sex. But um, right now, so I will relate miscegenation, COVID-19, and sexual health together. And that will be the wrap up in the next few minutes because we're almost out of time. But before that, we have time for one more country because I said we would do three. Oh, ooh, ooh. random thing I learned from TikTok. Okay. Americans, this I already knew. We count starting with our pointing pointer finger. Again, all this is cultural. We don't come out of the womb going one, two, you know, one, two, three, and three, three in Dutch. But uh, so Americans, for the most part, go one, two, three, four, five, right? Europeans, for the most part, one, two, three, four, five. So Americans start with pointers. Europeans with thumbs. I learned today from TikTok, apparently in a lot of Asian countries, you start with your pinky. So you're not starting with pointer or thumb, you're starting with your pinky. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And this particular TikTok video was talking about if you don't start with your pinky, one, two, three, and instead you start here or there, how the hell do you get this up? And you don't really, because <laughs> if you start, right? Because when your pinky's down, this is only about like halfway halfway up. So if you start here, you get a little bit further. But anyway, I digress. Country number three, studio audience member. One of my favorites, Francais. Francais, France. Vive la France, vive la France. France, 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 France. I love France. It's one of my favorite countries in Western Europe. I started studying French when I was in like sixth or seventh grade. It studied all the way through. Junior high, high school, college, undergrad college, grad college. I love French. So I love this idea of speaking about France. And it will go very quickly. Ooh, and we got more comments here. Again, comments, thoughts, leave them in there. Because I'll wrap all of those together before we log off in six and a half minutes. <gasps> so fast, right? It's yeah. almost 950. <sighs> okay, so um, France, good country. So France, or as we say in the U.S., France. For France. <laughs> So, uh, I love France, and one of the things... On oh, the champs Elysee. Yes, the champs Elysee and the Freeties. I love France. It's so, one of the things that Fra France, 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 either, you can say either, that France is doing very well is they actually have, backing up a bit, two little scooches backwards, you probably already know this, but with sexual health, we're talking about that generally speaking, and COVID-19, everyone is staying in their homes, or at least we should be staying in our homes. Not everyone's home is safe. We know that. So when we talk about sheltering at home for people who are experiencing intimate partner violence, um, which is a phrase we use instead of domestic violence because not everyone is literally domestically living with a partner that they have. And so it's intimate partner violence instead of domestic. But with COVID-19, we are sheltering, quote, sheltering at home with our partners, those of us who have partners. And not all of those relationships are safe. And so one of the things that we're seeing globally is a spike in intimate partner violence. And when you can't leave and go to a friend's house or a relative's house, and when you can't go to maybe a shelter because it's closed, and when you can't really just physically get out of that space, right? What do you do? 
one, you call the hotline, and I will drop a lot of those resources here too, but one, call the hotline in your country, uh, two, Google these kinds of things and make sure almost, if they don't, they should. Most of the intimate partner violence resources Websites, you can start reading and they'll have a quick release one. So if you're living with someone who might be coming in the room or whatever, there's usually a button on there that closes it immediately. So you can Google these things, find it. And if you're in a place where you're using a shared computer, clear your cache. You can do control live with Chrome or others, but clear your cache, clear your search history, do all these things. Tons of different advice stuff that we can give. This particular kind of talk in my living room, we talk about sexual health and promoting healthy sexuality, not explicitly just sexual assault, the side of the stuff and intimate partner violence, the stuff we're trying to um, prevent by teaching more healthy relationship skills and healthy stuff. But because we're talking about sexual health and we're talking about fronts, one of the things that they're doing, and tying it back to the conversation we had about the way that women lead, France actually has a minister of gender equity, I think it's called their gender, but they basically have someone who is a senior person in the French government whose whole job is to look at gender initiatives and gender, how gender plays into everything across the country. And so it's not only a matter of like how women lead, but it's how do we organize and lead our countries and our states such that we factor into what one of the commentators said, that women have different experiences and gender, broadly speaking, can affect the way that you live. So what is France doing right now with the situation where we're in COVID-19 and sheltering at home, where homes may not be safe? The government is actually getting hotel rooms for people who are experiencing intimate partner violence. And so you actually can be put up in a hotel room on the government's dime to make sure that you're safe and healthy and being able to be a productive, healthy, happy, safe member of their society. Like, how wonderful is that? I think that's great. So it's like, the way in which people lead, the kinds of solutions that come to the table when we've got that. And if you're wondering, like, well, how do these women find out? France actually adopted, like, how do these women find out and let people know that they are in an intimate partner violence situation if they can't go out and tell people? All of these countries, for the most part, you can go exercise, like for a walk, not to a gym. Walk. You can go get food at your grocery stores. You can go to the pharmacy to get medical supplies. And so Spain started it, if I'm not incorrect. And then France adopted it. So it started in Spain. And the idea was, what if we came up with a code word? Much like if you're doing sexual practices that are just outside of your boundaries, you have a code word, right? Like some code word that says safe word, code word, like ah, I need to like communicate something beyond this one word that I'm using. But when I use this one word that we all understand, we will know that that means, you know, like danger zone, get out of here kind of thing. And so the safe word in Spain and also in France, is mask 19. So you go to the pharmacy, if a woman, you're a woman or a man or any gender, because everyone experiences intimate partner violence. So you go into your pharmacy, which you're allowed to go to, and instead of saying, you know, you're there for your many number of drugs that you might be there, you go and you say, I'm here for mask 19. That's the code that lets them know that you're not in a safe situation at home, and then they can actually route you into services so they can get you into the hotel so that you're out of that situation. How brilliant is that? So as we think about, and I encourage you, if there's any country you've been to outside of the United States to travel, or you've wanted to go to outside of the States or anything like that, Google that country's name plus COVID-19 plus sexual health and kind of see what are all the different things that are possible. Because I think sometimes when we think about gender discrimination that sounds so heavy and sad and things like that, what if instead we looked at it as like the opposite of it, not just gender discrimination and oppression of women and things like that, which are horrible and need to be discussed, but what if we looked at it like, what are the kinds of solutions and ideas and imaginative just brainstorming that comes to fore when we actually factor women into the equation and all genders into the equation a bit more? So that's something to think about. And in this last minute, and let me make sure if there's anything. Hey, kitten, 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 kitten. Do you want to be on TV? Do you want to be on YouTube? Is that why you're sad? Nobody sees your beautiful face, kitten? No, that's not why. <laughs> he wants food. That's what that's about. And you're getting that in one and a half minutes. Okay, so let me quickly make sure um, that I go through this. I want to talk about uh, mar how about marriage counseling is one of the comments. Yes. I'm a huge fan of marriage counseling. I'm not actually a fan of dating counseling. If you've been dating someone less than a year or so, I feel like dating is a 
exercise and compatibility. And if you need to be in counseling to even speak to each other after six months, you may not be compatible. Like, so actually think about that as a possibility too. So I don't think every relationship is meant to last. And so I do think that it is good to consider counseling, but also considering is terminating the relationship the right thing. So the question here, how about marriage counseling? Yes, I'm a fan of it, obviously. Um, the one thing that I say is nobody deserves abuse. And so if you are in an abusive relationship and the other person is not willing to stop that behavior because it is 100% on them, um, then terminating that relationship may be the way to go. Again, this is not advice for an intimate partner violence situation. You should speak to someone who works in that space if you're doing it. That's not the point of this right now. So that's not what I'm saying with that. Okay, if you're self-aware, you can adapt your attitude and behavior and for your success and the success of your team. Um, I think that's about leadership. Yes, that is true. Um, and then here, miscegenation. This is where we're going to end it in the last 30 seconds. Drop that miscegenation bomb and let it go. So the comment here was, miscegenation is not healthy for descendants of slavery. So several different things. Okay, one... I didn't know people were still using the word miscegenation after 1962 or 66 or 67 when the Loving versus the state of Virginia uh, Supreme Court decision came down. And that was the law in the United States that made it legal for different ethnic groups, racial ethnic groups to marry. Uh, two, not healthy. Healthy is that word that I want to center on. And I will leave everyone to think about this. When it comes to you, you personally, the person listening to this right now, getting the love that you deserve, the support that you deserve, and the care that you deserve, I don't give one rat's ass goddamn flying fuck. If it's a white person, a black person, a Muslim person, a woman, a transgender person, a man, an immigrant, someone who is formerly incarcerated, I think the thing that we need to focus on when we're talking about healthy relationships is making sure that people are finding the love that they need and deserve, that that needs to be the starting point. Everything else is secondary. And I will close by count, uh, quoting Father Michael, who was a friar who actually died in September 11 in New York. And there's a wonderful documentary about him called The Saint of 9-11. And there were all these rumors flying around about was he gay, was he not? Because, like, you know, he said all these, you know, LGBTQ supportive things and is that okay for religion? And so, like, people kind of came after him and stuff. And he did all these things to support people who were coming out of the towers. And there's this photo of him being ushered out by first responders and that he eventually did pass. And so there's this documentary called The Saint of 9-11 about it. And he, as a Catholic person, said, is there so much love in the world? Like, have we reached the point, right? that there's so much love in the world that we should start discriminating against any kind of love. I don't think we have. So if you found someone to love you, I don't care who that person is, quite frankly. I really don't. And that's how we'll end it. Thank you, everybody. Woo! Have a good night. Love you all. Love, respect, kisses, and everything to everyone. Take care. Be happy. Be safe. Stay good. Stay sexy.